Welcome everyone, this is Jenkins Platform SIG meeting. We are on the last day of January 2023. Today we have Mark Waite, Kevin Martins, Damien Duportal and myself, um, Bruno Verachter. We have a few open action items in the agenda. The first one has been done. Thanks a lot, Mark. We had to find a better time for this meeting, which used to be on the Friday night for us European folks. and. <laughs> On Tuesday night, it's not even night, it's the very beginning of evening, it's much, much better. So, I'm fine with us, thanks a lot. And it won't change, uh, only if uh, somebody has to change it. So, for the timing, the time we chose is perfectly perfect. Now, um, Damien, well, we're, you're there, uh, we have a few items for you. Um, it was in the open action item, I think we can get rid of it, but I just want to be sure. We had to talk about the platform support container Windows 2019, Windows 2022. Is that a done update? Can we remove it? Um, infrastructure area, it's done. We have the we can execute Windows 2022 container. It's supported, but it's not done uh, on the for the Docker image. We don't have a pull request. We have a pull request from a user. But yes. it's never answered, so I consider okay. that pull request being uh, dead. So someone need to work on adding the new Windows support. However, before that, so for the agent, we can start working now. Anyone interested can get started. For the support of Windows, uh, Jenkins Core on Windows 2022, for that image, there is... Um, let me try to phrase it correctly. Um, we should not spend time on this one because we know that we have a publication issue with the Windows image. Um, Jenkins yes, score hasn't been published properly since months. We have a user that is trying to help. Uh, that user is lacking information I try to give them, but it's not that easy. And we have an overall publication concern that image, so that will not make sense to start working on a 2022 because we are not even sure if we will continue shipping these images. Mm -hmm. So I propose to put that on hold and remove the topic item on platform SIG for now, or put I, it on the backlog. I like that. I think I think we we seriously should ask ourselves if we want to publish a Windows container image given that result. Uh, a Windows container image for core. It's agents agreed. Agent images, it makes all everybody sense we're we're actively using them. But core as a Docker contain as a container image for Windows, questionable how useful it is to the community. No idea. To <laughs> say the truth. Um I'm using WSL. I guess lots of people use WSL when they are using Windows. I don't know about why and when uh, somebody should use Docker for Windows on Windows. I don't know if it exists. There is a reason for that, but for Jenkins, um, certainly, certainly there is a reason. As an agent, it works very, very well. Or okay, maybe that's too strong. As an agent, <laughs> it works reasonably. <laughs> okay, but and and is a little bit cheaper than spinning up a new Windows virtual machine, right? It's yeah. you've already got the machine running. You just take a a container and run it. But why not a Linux well? Because I need to do Windows stuff. Oh, of course. It, Some people do. I know. I, I know. I know. I know. Bruno, it's hard <laughs> to imagine there are those of us who actually run on Windows every day and, and who use Windows all the time. <laughs> okay. It's Got not it. Friday. You cannot troll anymore. <laughs> we changed the day. You cannot say. Okay. It was even not a troll. I was, uh, yeah. It was a truth for me. I, couldn't imagine. Yes, some people work on Windows and uh, they don't have to, they choose to. Oh, well, that, and, uh, and you're right, .NET, .NET is not a big one for us, but there are certainly communities, places in the Jenkins development environment where it is a big deal. And .NET on Windows is much better than .NET on Linux, right? It's the .NET on Linux yeah. port is, is a subset. So, yeah. And I've seen some uh, messages in the community discourse uh, from people which are building for Windows with Docker. Ex so, yeah. Exactly. I want to build an MSI. I want to do yeah. all sorts of dark things with with Windows that are very Windows specific. Yes. And and that 
Yes, exactly. Sorry about the troll. I couldn't help myself. Or update CLI to run an end-to-end -end testing with the Windows binary. We generate it on Linux, but we want an end-to-end -end testing to be sure that at least we smoke test the thing. Hello, Thomas. Okay. Thank you. Uh, next, Damien, it's on you, this one too. Uh, we talked a long time ago about uh, the Docker image download statistics. I guess you've been so busy with JFrog and so on that that's not the main subject you're working on. So is it still a thing? Uh, should we have a look? Should we remove it from the open action items? Um, yeah, so officially, yes, I have been busy. Officiously, not officially, I forget about that, <laughs> to be quite honest, I'm sorry. Um, but I don't think it, it should be... Uh, I propose to move it to the backlog because it will be useful. But given that we had it, the new Ruby 9 image that we are speaking about Windows 2022, it means that we are not using metrics as a way to decide if we should or should not. It's not the main decision lever. It could help. It could be the main decision lever. But right now, I don't see any urge on doing that. So I propose to move that to backlog but not delete that absolutely because it could be useful. And I'm not the only admin, uh, so we, I need to check who is admin, but I think there will be other people uh, who could access that or better, I could create accounts if it's okay with only the ability to read these statistics. As far as I can tell with the Docker up plan we have, we might be able to have an account with only this permission. So people won't be able to write or push images, only get the statistics. Okay. And as we have two members uh, of the community which who are fond of statistics, uh, Jean-Marc Messen, Adrien Charpentier, uh, maybe they could use uh, that account. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, now, another big and long subject, um, merging the Docker agent repositories into a single one. I don't know if anything has progressed uh, with that subject. No, not yet. Yeah, so it's, should it still be an um, open action item or do you want it to be in the back? Yes, uh, for me it's a top priority item for the platform SIG. Cool, thank you. Now, uh, Docker image is the one for BlueOcean. We've been talking about this one for a few meetings. Uh, is there anything new, Mark or Kevin or Damien, regarding uh, this image? Are some people still talking about that, or <laughs> just everybody forgot about it? I had, I have. It's not that I've forgotten about it. It's that it's not been nearly close enough to for me to do any work on it. We do and just need people, to announce sorry. this deprecation. Go ahead, yeah. Bruno. Sorry, I, I meant uh, end users, not people which were supposed to work on that. No, just um, people asking for some help or for oh. some news or anything. So I've oh. I've not seen any further requests yeah. in a month or more. Not on community.jenkins.io, but of course, if they ask on community.jenkins.io, Gavin Mogan very promptly tells them, just like we do, that that container image is deprecated, right? We're not so so. He's he's carrying the message very nicely. We just cool. need to make it official. Yeah, thank you. So should we keep it in uh, the open action items or move it let's, to backlog or let's keep it on the action items because there's benefit to us to get rid of that. Definitely. <laughs> but uh, later on in the document, it's written you have to talk about that each and every meeting so we do that okay yeah it's just there got it thank you mark uh now control repository yeah it's still in the open action item so we can get rid of that and thanks for windows we also talked about that so yeah it will go into the backlog if you don't mind me butchering the document <laughs> now Oops. um Ongoing work with Docker images. So I've seen quite a few changes in the latest uh, Docker agents, but um, we also have new platforms. It was from the last meeting, I guess. So maybe we could get rid of that. Now we know that we have Windows 2022 available thanks to Stefan. So for the infra, but yeah, I would actually phrase this one is for me. This was con Docker container was container images, 
And so for Windows 2022, we don't have it, but no, you could say we don't have. UBI yeah, don't. 9, we do have. There's a, there's a, there is clearly a new platform, UBI 9. How do you call it? Do we write that? UBI 9? Yeah, UB, no. that's great. No, UBI and then the digit 9. No, 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 no. Yeah, sorry about that. Exactly. With JDK 17, mm. maintained by um, Oliver Gonja of Red Hat. Okay, can't write his name, but got it. Surreal. So real... oh, sorry, G O N D Z A. G. Uh, uh, G. Oh, um, <laughs> close. The the J the Ilung. The letter G. That one needs to be a, a, a exact perfect spelled exactly. Thanks for your help. <laughs> a B C D E. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. Um, the... Right. He, he is also the maintainer of the UBI 8 container image, so it's a good fit. Cool. Got it. Uh, Damien, is Wolfie still a subject, or are we still thinking about that? Uh, I have, uh, I wasn't present when the topic was raised on the platform. I tell you, I'm sorry for that. Um, I think that will be worth working with that or asking the person that uh, with Chengar dev who built uh, in a pre preliminary example of Jenkins and Jenkins agent, that will make sense. The reason is that this specific ver definition will help people who want to run Jenkins without taking many risks. So it's not for people that require CentOS for the container image for whatever administrative reason. It's for people who really want to rely on something that should be um, only as small as possible and as secure as possible. Okay, for people like me who don't know much about Wolfie, could you tell us in a few words what it's all about? So the idea of Wolfie is saying, when you provide a container, there is, uh, having multiple operating system not only is a nightmare, but also is a risk because most of the time, what you add on the container, you can control if there is a CVE or a security issue and you had yourself and you should be able to say, I need this particular set of dependencies that I control. However, the dependencies that come from the upstream image are risky. Right now, if you run a security scan on the latest Jenkins image, even the one we just published, um, you will have a bunch of CVE or security advisories on tools that we don't even use because they are part of the default Linux distribution behind. The idea with Wolfie is that you only install, build and run what you need. So for Jenkins, you only need a GDK. You only need eventually curl for running the script shell supports at the beginning of the image. But you only need a set of tools that you can exhaustively define. It's in the area of the new SBOM uh, trend. Yep. I say trend in a neutral way. Uh, <laughs> the SBOM is bill of material is to list what is exactly inside the image. That also help on the area of build reproductibility if you want something to be rebuilt. Because each time you run an apt-get package or apt add, you can create Mayhem in the dependency chain. So Wolfie is an operating system that has been built only for running inside containers. It's not aimed at running machines. And within container, it reused part of the Alpine APK package system, but also it works a bit like Nix. You compile and build each of the tools you need and you create your own dependencies. So would it be, sorry uh, to interrupt, uh, would oh, no, it be a sorry. good comparison or totally bad one uh, talking about the old Linux from scratch that we experienced with uh, yes. years ago, but just for containers in a very with a, with a very small exactly. subset of tools you need. Okay, that's the same idea, but only containers you said, and with tools that normal human can use to extend the image if they want. Okay. Thanks a lot for the explanation. That was crystal clear. Oh, if you ever have finished with that, I, I'm not sure. No, that's okay. So okay, just to know, chain guards people. I assume some former Jenkins and Jenkins 6 contributor. They have built, let's say, test images of a Jenkins core using GDK 17. I think it's the um, oh, Timurin GDK 17, but not sure. 
where the amount of security advisory uh, from the chain guard uh, uh, security scanner has drastically decreased. Like you have one or two instead of hundreds, like drastically. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, that makes more I sense. I don't, please be with me. I'm not saying we have security issues. <laughs> no, no, we got image. it. image. I say the scanner points a list of potential security issues that can or cannot be exploited. They yes, don't which... give you actionable on what to do with this. Yeah, which are part of uh, the latest Debian, the latest Ubuntu, the latest uh, Alpine, and so on. They are mm -hmm. there. Absolutely. Cool. Oh, thank you. <laughs> That's interesting, yeah. really. And regarding Arc Linux, oh, sorry, go ahead. I I'm just, my, my skepticism kicks in here because of past <laughs> experience with Linux from scratch kind of experiences, right? Linux from scratch and its... And its variants, the, the FreeBSD package system, the OpenBSD package system, um, those things are notoriously challenging to maintain and make portable. They take a lot of work. And Wolfie is a, is a young project, right? I mean, FreeBSD's package system is, is a very mature project. Arch Linux, Arch, Arch Linux is a very mature system. Wolfie is, for me, still brand new. And I'm I'm hesitant to jump onto it yet. Yeah, 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 the thing is, I really think we need, if we want to be cloud friendly, to go in that direction because Wolfie is clearly a way to have some exposure, to validate some behaviors of Jenkins, to clean up the list of dependencies we need on the Docker image. We will clearly benefit from trying to fit Jenkins into Wolfie. We will learn from that and we will improve all the other images by saying, oh, we need that dependency. And I've got a real life example today, Git. Which version of Git is installed on the latest GDK 11 image of Jenkins? Uh, point thirty something? It, it, no, it depends which, which is the base operating system for the container. For Debian, it's one version. For UBI 9, it's another version. For UBI 8, it's another version. For CentOS 7, it's a terrible, awful, and evil version. Of course, it's CentOS. <laughs> it's CentOS 7. Which, Similar, yeah. 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 So, Do... so, yes, Damien, Damien's point is correct, right? If, if we take responsibility to deliver the version of Git we prefer, we would switch and always deliver the most recent release, right? We would be delivering Git 2.39 and not care about the operating system vendor. And, and that's what Wolfie, and I agree, that's, that's Linux from scratch and Wolfie both give you that benefit, right? You, you get to choose, I want Git and I want it from the latest release. Yeah, uh, the thing is, I don't um, think as much as you do, Mark. I don't have that much experience either. You know, as soon as I see something new, oh, look, a squirrel. Uh, <laughs> that's the way I'm interacting with Wolfie. I, I got a proposal here because we all are busy and that kind of thing should not rely on the four of us. I think we should ask people at ChainGuard and tell them uh, if it's okay and if there is no objection. But my proposal is we ask them that we are okay to, uh, to introduce a new image. And so if they are willing to open a pull request on the repository, we can get started and spend time on reviewing and understanding it. The way I see it is that we know what we don't know. So if they open a pull request, we can then start the discussion on, oh, how can we document to end users, hey, I, got, I'm, I could use Wolf image if I want to add the AWS command line inside that controller image so that Jenkins can do whatever with that with the, at the controller level or Kubernetes. Some plugin requires that or would help. What will be the path? What is the documentation on Wolfie that helps me to install or build myself AWS dependencies so I can build it? That's an example out of the world, but the goal is that we can focus on that part as reviewers and maintainers while people who already have the experience on Wolfie could get the heavy lifting. They already did it, so they could provide things and we just have to package and polish that and get started with that first iteration. What do you think? I mean, sounds very reasonable to me. 
Is there someone volunteering to contact them or should I do it? Because I volunteer as fallback because I'm interested, but I don't want to step on someone else too. So if you want to contact them, I don't mind either. I'd love to have you do it rather than me because my biases lead me away from it. Your, I think your interest leads you towards it and that's a good thing. So you see it as a positive and I like that. So I change that into David. Oh, you can keep work for whatever reason. Sorry. Uh, okay. Thank you. Why we are talking about new uh, platforms. Uh, can we talk back Arc Linux? I know it's linked to, um, you know, the statistics we don't have yet about the usage of the different images, but so is it still a subject? Should we deprecate Arc Linux or not without having the numbers of downloaded images? I, I think we should, but again, my bias is to remove things that I am not persuaded are of value. I'm, I also think we should start announcing the end of life of the CentOS 7 image. But again, that's, you're, you're hearing my biases being echoed loudly here. Yes. Uh, was saying, uh, it would be perfect where there is nothing l more to remove uh, from. So maybe removing OS Linux will make Jenkins containers just a tiny little bit more perfect. Um, I don't know. Okay. Damien, um, Kevin. Okay. Yeah. I don't think yeah. it's worth it deprecating. It's right now we have at least one person using the base image, so. Ooh, okay. Nice. Um, last time, uh, if that's okay for everyone, we'll move on. Uh, we talked about, Mark talked about the Debian 12, which is bookworm that will not deliver open JDK 11. I don't know if there's anything new. And by the way, I thought I knew a few things about uh, Debian, uh, but I learned this morning that all the name of the distributions were linked to, uh, what was it? A comics? Toy Story. Toy Story. Toy Story. Toy Story. Yeah, I movie. didn't know that. And that's why uh, the Unstable is Sid, which is, which happens to be the bad boy at the neighbor of, oh, anyhow, uh, I didn't know that. Now I know, and I maybe will quit using Sid. <laughs> Uh, it was from Very Veronica Explains, which is a YouTube channel I happen to watch from time to time. Anyhow, Mark, any news about that or is it the same? Yes. Yeah, so, so further, more details of, I've learned more since, since having further discussion and looking at end of life dates for Open JDK 11. So end of life date for Open JDK 11 does not happen until at least 2027 or 2026. So it's got a nice long life ahead of us. Um, so there is not a, an urgent press that we need to drop JDK 11 support for, for Jenkins. But I still think we are doing the correct thing to say that in April or May, whenever they release Debian 12, we will change the Jenkins documentation for Debian and for Red Hat to describe how to install with Java 17. It's, it's fully supported. It's already fully supported. And there's no reason we should describe Java 11 when Java 17 works so well. Yeah. I, I got a question. Mm -hmm. um, when you say open GDK 11, are you referring specifically to Timurin distribution or the distribution package by Debian when you have to get install open GDK? So, so when you do a, an apt get install of open JDK, the package provided by Debian, the Debian project w will not deliver open JDK 11 because I assume it's because they don't want to have the life have it live longer than their op have to support it beyond the beyond the end of its life for their their operating system okay because the thing is that we don't use that package today well in our community yes careful 
our our installation instructions on Jenkins.io. Oh, true. We we'll use uh, that, as does our package install instructions for yep. the Deb package. Now you're right. Container images don't use that, and yeah. and we we highly recommend container images, but for those who are using native package installers, uh, we we do continue to use the operating system packages, both for Red Hat, uh, for SUSE, and for Debian and Ubuntu. Yeah, and okay. uh, on smaller machines where uh, having a Docker container is slightly overhead that I I can't use, I have to use. Uh, the ones with packages which are provided by the uh, Debian or Ubuntu. By the way, um, is a PPA or is the PPA, PPA uh, for Debian and Ubuntu the same for the Open JDK build or not? I I don't. Know. I've never tried to use a PPA. Mm. So the op it's not a PPA. It's actually the Open JDK. Inside. Okay. The Open JDK package is actually provided by the Debian operating system, right? So it's not a not a separate thing that I have to do anything to enable. And it's built by the Debian maintainers and it validated is. by them, especially built the by them, validated by them and maintained by them. And sometimes that was to a detriment. Actually, there was a period five or seven years ago where they made a mistake in their maintenance of. The JDK and that mistake caused some unexpected damage. Yeah, so it's it's act actively maintained by the people on the Debian project. Okay, but this sometimes is different uh, depending on the platform or the CPU architecture. For example, I'm just thinking out loud about my Risk Five, which uses a uh, zero VM from uh, the Ubuntu operating system. And if I were to install that on another CPU architecture like R64, for example, it would be a hotspot enabled machine so yeah take care with what you are downloading from the operating system it's not always the best jdk you could find find for <laughs> your system correct right so but it but in this case the the benefit to our users we're going to document java 17 and we're going to recommend that they use java 17 by documenting it we yep. will drop support for java 11 and and we'll continue supporting both uh, but there will come a time in the future when the Jenkins project will have a Jen Jenkins enhancement proposal that will eventually drop support for Java 17. It's just not likely to happen any time during calendar 2023. Yeah. We, we don't need to rush it. Of course. Thank you, Mark. Um, by the way, will we one day or the other uh, talk about Timurin because we're using it in for our container images, but in the official documentation, does it make sense? No, not at all. Or do we have some kind of partnership or do, I know we have the list of the supported JDKs, but I don't know, should we talk more about Timurin or not at all? That's, that's a good question. Uh, maybe, maybe let's bring it separately because you're right. We don't, we, I don't know of any place where we actively describe in the Jenkins documentation, our intentional choice of Timurin as the container JDK, but it, it may be there and I've just forgotten. But I think that's a that's a good good idea that we we have made an intentional choice there to use Temerin, and the choice was made actually I think in the platform SIG because Temerin provides the platform supports all the platforms that matter to the Jenkins project. Um, sixty four bit ARM, sixty four bit Intel, and System three ninety are the three architectures that are actively supported by by the Jenkins project. Our container images deliver at least some variant of each of those three. Thank you, Mark. Oh, uh, now JDK support for Jenkins required Java 11. Is that still a subject or no? no. Actually, I am proud to announce that the Jenkins enhancement proposal proposing to require Java 11 is now final which means completed, done, merged, everything. So for Java 11, JDK 11, for require JDK 11 is final. So we have, we have completed all the steps. Congrats on that. Uh, and thank you, Basil, I guess. Uh, <laughs> Thanks very much to Basel, to so many others. Yep. Uh, Damien, once again, it's for you. 
don't be mages. So it, that's still a thing. Yeah. Fixed. We found the issue. Fixed. We migrated the deployment job on trusted CI, and we were able to validate that the latest agents were picked. And we checked manually each job to see that there is no Git pull uh, features from past years that were enabled. So we cleaned up that up, and that's OK. Three days ago. Wow. That's a major step. Back training. Uh, now, GDK19 available, that means on the infra, am I right? Yes. Frick. Sure. Yeah. So yeah, it's done. The... <laughs> yeah. We, on, in, in infra, uh, it's done. Um, it can be used by people if you want to test. I don't see any use case for the platform because it's uh, not an LTS version that should be the GDK21. So I don't see any reason uh, right now, but I might be missing use cases, don't hesitate to add them. So that's why I'm an, I propose to put that topic as done. Yeah. Um, maybe for some people like me who have too much time on the hand and want to test their piece of software uh, with GDK19 or 20 to see where it will fail, not if, just where. <laughs> That's a good idea. Uh, oh, some news for the IBM S319X, Mark. Maintenance, okay. Yeah, so, and that one has been merged. So I submitted that. I'll include a link. And Bruno, you can just um, click the link to see it. It's a little more dramatic than I had intended for it to be, but <laughs> click the link so everyone can see it in the recording. So the System 390 agent may restart one or more times Friday the 3rd of February from 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern Time in the United States. Got it. The red text, the issue is not resolved yet, is accurate. It just, this is, I tried to choose the least severe of any of the options, and apparently that's that still shows issue is not resolved yet, rather than showing that the window starts this Friday. Okay. Yeah, the website is not that precise. <laughs> yeah. No, no shame. It's a static website, right? It, 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 it's, since it's a static website, it can't be time dependent. Oh, and you are saying uh, in the next sentence that test automation jobs are only known users, so even no human being will re read what you just wrote on the static Correct. website. I, so, I, uh, I documented it there as practice for that way people know if, if somebody were surprised, they could see it on status.jenkins.io that the agent was restarted. Perfectly perfect. Thanks a lot, Mark. And yes, we've seen some updates for Java in the containers. Am I right? So, they not just in containers on all really? the infra. These oh. these updates are deployed to all all Jenkins infra throughout all of our container images. Only one exception: Windows containers. Oh, okay. We haven't checked because when we deployed the rest, the official image for Windows weren't available at least the support for nano server. We are watching that. But uh, every other builds uh, are able to do it. Great. Nice. Uh, thank you for that. Kevin, Mark, Damien, anything else to add before we close? Yep. Okay, that's a wrap up. Thanks, thanks a lot for being here. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Oh, thanks for driving that. Thanks. And thanks very much. You're awesome. Welcome. You uh, the recording should be available from 24 to 48 hours. And see you um, two weeks from now. Bye-bye.